Hello and welcome back to another video with It's Dr. Dan and we're going to be learning about what is a mole, which is a concept that tends to be a little overwhelming the first time we learn it, but let's just try to explain exactly what it is. So is it this little fuzzy little creature or is it something that actually represents something in a chemistry sense? So when it comes to moles, the whole idea of it is that it's an SI unit. So it's one of our basic units, just like uh, meters or kilograms. So for this one, moles represents the number of particles that we can find in a given substance. And more specifically, it's used for us as scientists to be able to measure the amount of a given substance. So what, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's a way for us to be able to simplify things. So if we take that mole, we're trying to simplify our process. So one way, how do we simplify things in our everyday life? Well, one way is if I go to the grocery store and you try to buy a dozen eggs, well, how many eggs are you buying? Well, think about it that way. So if I have one dozen, that's the equivalent of saying that you have, what, 12 eggs, right? Whenever we go through any of these different processes. So if we have 12 eggs, well, that's something that that came directly to your brain. Well, a mole is something that's very simple to, or very similar to that process. When we say that we have one mole of a substance, well, we're going to be first saying how many particles there are. Well, for this one, the way that we do that is that we say that we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles. And now why that number? Well, that number in particular is called Avogadro's number. I like to think of it as it means, sounds like avocado, but it's Avogadro's number is how we represent that. So one mole is that many particles, and that's a really big number. But you gotta remember, particles or atoms or ions or any of these little species, they're so tiny. They are something that we can't physically see. So what can that be represented with? Well, if I use, let's say the periodic table and we look up carbon, well, what mass does that represent? Is that represented by? Well, if you look on your periodic table, you'll see that about 12.01 uh, is the number that is being shown on that periodic table, which is represented in atomic mass units. Now that atomic mass unit is something that directly relates to the number of moles and also it relates to something that we can measure in the lab, which is grams. So instead of using atomic mass units, what we're gonna instead say is that, all right, well, if I measure out 12.01 grams in the lab on the balance, what that directly represents is one mole of carbon. So that's a conversion term for ourselves. So we can write that down, right? 12.01 grams of carbon, all over one mole of carbon, or we can flip it depending on what kind of dimensional analysis type conversion we are doing. However, how does that directly relate to this term that we used above here, and um, which was the term of the mole in this Avogadro's number type effect here? Well, being that if we have 12.01 grams of carbon, that also, as we mentioned, is one mole of carbon, but one mole of carbon is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles, or in this case, being that we're referring to the atom of carbon, this is atoms, all right? So it's atoms of carbon. So all those terms can be used uh, intricately for with one another using our periodic table as conversion terms. So this is a very powerful tool for us in the near future. So if we look at like any of these different elements on the periodic table, so I have a bunch of samples here that were measured in the lab. So we just showed carbon, for example, right? If we measure about 12 grams out, that represents one mole. Now, if I kind of look at some of these other species like zinc or magnesium or copper, or sulfur, silicon, any of these, and I measure out the exact value that we see on the periodic table, that is measuring out one mole. So let's take, a, if we take copper, for example, and we try to find that on the periodic table. So when we find that, you see that, all right, well, it lists out that we have about 63.546 grams, or AMU, what you're used to. And what we're gonna do with that value is that represents how many moles of copper we have. 
So why don't we write that down? So if we take that copper value, if I have 63.5 grams of copper, well, that's going to tell you that you have one mole of copper. It also tells you that one mole of copper is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of copper. So we can use those different methods as conversions. So let's try to write that down. Let's define all the different steps and conversions we can use with the mole that you're going to see in your everyday chemistry class. So the first one, what is it? So the first one is molar mass. Molar mass is any time that you're going between grams and moles. So that is what you're going to be grabbing from your periodic table. Okay, so that is your periodic table value. And that's what's going to show going between those different values. So we're going to be, let's say if we pick something um, like sodium, for example, we could define what its molar mass is. We could see that, all right, well, sodium, if we look at our periodic table, has a very, very long uh, molar mass. But we can define that really quickly as maybe just say 22.99 grams per mole. 22.99 grams for every mole, right? And that is for sodium. So we can define that. So what other things can we come up with? Well, there's also Avogadro's number. So that would be the second one. So Avogadro's number. And how that is, is for every any mole that you have. So let's say if we continue our example of sodium, well, we could say that one mole of sodium is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of sodium, okay? Now, what other things can we do? Well, there's one other that we'll do in a little bit. We can also define mole to mole conversions. So how could that work? So if I do a different color here, so mole to mole conversions. So what would be an example of that is let's say if I take water and I ask you, all right, if I have one mole of water, what else can that tell you? Well, think about your subscripts. What do your subscripts tell you? Well, if I look at this one, we have two hydrogens for every one oxygen that we have in this formula, right? So two hydrogens for every one oxygen, so H2O. So what that tells you is that for every one mole of H2O, which is in this case a molecule, we have two moles of hydrogen. We also have one mole of oxygen, which are both elements. So this allows you to be able to relate between compounds, molecules, elements. So if you start with a given mass, for example, you can maybe start seeing that there's gonna be conversions that are available to you. So let's say if I pick a, if I come up with a problem where if I ask you what is the mass of a single atom of, of sodium, how would we do that? Well. We could kind of try to think, well, all right, well, if I have one atom of sodium, well, how can I try to convert atoms and try to cancel that out? Well, we know that we have Avogadro's number, which is referring to atoms. So if I kind of put this in my little T tables, just to show these little conversions. So if we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of sodium, now atoms cancels out atoms, and that's going to be equivalent to one mole of sodium. Now, is that where we're done? Well, we're trying to figure out mass. So what term can we go from mole to mass? Well, that would be molar mass, right? So we can use the term that we defined earlier. So we can say that one mole of sodium is equivalent to that 22.99 grams of sodium. So now we can show, all right, well, that's going to cancel out as well. We're now moles of sodium cancels moles of sodium. We definitely want to write our units here. And now we're just going to be left with only grams. So we multiply everything on top. So it'd be one mole times one mole 
times 22.99 divided by all the values that are on the bottom. And what we are going to get is 3.818 times 10 to the negative 23 grams. So this shows you that, all right, well, if I go through all these little calculations, I can go from atoms to moles to grams. That's an extremely powerful method for us to be able to use at our disposal. Now, what else can we do with this? How can we try to figure out a little bit of um, all the different pieces of the puzzle that we can show here? Well, some other things we can do is, is we can also calculate molar mass of compounds and molecules as well. So if I take, let's say, water, for example, and I ask you, what is the molar mass of water? Well, that's when we're going to be using our periodic table from before. So we can see that, all right, well, we have hydrogen, which was about uh, 1.008 grams. Oh, I'm moving things around. It's 1.008 grams of our different <laughs> molecule or atom here. And then we also have oxygen. So hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole. Oxygen is 15.999 grams per mole. So we, what we can do is, is we can add up all these values and multiply it by whatever its subscript is. So if I have two hydrogens, right, we're going to multiply hydrogen by two, and I have one oxygen, we're going to take all those values and then add them together. So if I go through that process and I add up that I have uh, 1.008 grams per mole and then the roughly 16 grams per mole for oxygen, we're going to get approximately 18.02 grams per mole for H2O. And that's with a little bit of rounding just to kind of <laughs> give me some uh, slack here when it comes to showing how to do that. But we're just adding up the different values. So this is a conversion term that we can use in future problems. Let's try another one. Let's say if I wanted to add up the molar mass of, let's say if I give you uh, maybe glucose. So if we have glucose, which is C6H12O6, so this is a pretty big molecule, we can go through and try to do the same thing. Use our subscripts. So if I start with carbon, right, we have six carbons. We can use our periodic table to look up the molar mass, which is about uh, 12.009 AMU. We can then look up how many hydrogens there are. So hydrogen, there are 12 of them. Sorry, we're using grams per mole in this case. Hydrogen, there's 12 of them, so that's going to be 1.008 grams per mole. So let's try to color code these for ourselves. And 12 and 12. And then for oxygen, what we're going to do is that there's six of them. So this is going to be times that 15.999 grams per mole. So you're going to take six times 12.009 add it to the 12 times 1.008, add it to the 6 times 15.999, and then we'll get our molar mass for a bigger compound, which is 180.142 AMU. Okay, so it's given us that ability to solve for all kinds of different problems or uh, in these different things. And I keep saying AMU, but we're doing grams per mole because we're working on molar mass, right? So this is for glucose. So if I asked you, let's say if I had um, maybe if we wanted to figure out how many moles there are in this particular compound, we could do that. So we have glucose. So we could say that we have one mole of glucose. How many moles of carbon are there? How many moles of hydrogen are there? How many moles of oxygen? Well, for every one mole of glucose, we're going to have one mole or sorry, six moles of carbon, 12 moles of hydrogen, and six moles of oxygen. So with that, these are how you can define your mole-to-mole -mole ratios, which is what I talked about step three from earlier of how you can do some major conversions. So let's say if I had um, 10 grams of glucose, and I wanted to know how many grams of oxygen 
are in 10 grams of glucose. How would we do that? Well, this can be a little bit of a harder problem. Why don't we try setting it up? So if I have 10 grams, the first thing is, is the goal is always the mole. Okay, so if you can convert to moles, you can then convert it to anywhere. So the goal is the mole. So if I have 10 grams of C6H12O6, how would we get to moles? Well, that's where our molar mass is going to come in, which we calculated earlier. So it's going to be that 180.142 grams per mole. Now, being that we want to cancel out grams, so that's going to go on the bottom here. Those two units are going to cancel, and that's going to be equivalent to every one mole of C6H12O6. So that gets us to moles. We got our goal. However, we want to get to oxygen. So what can I define next? Well, we can look at our subscripts and define the ratio of moles of oxygen to moles of glucose. So if we have one mole of glucose, that will cancel out these values here. And that's going to be equivalent to six moles of oxygen. So by doing that, that allows you to all of a sudden go from having grams to moles. Now we canceled that out, and now we're left with only moles of oxygen, which is a very useful conversion. We just converted something from one species to another. This gives you predictability in chemistry. So now our last step is being that we want grams of oxygen. What do we need? Moles to grams, molar mass. So one mole of oxygen is going to be equivalent to 15.999 grams of oxygen. And that gives you your final conversion and giving you grams. So if we were to solve all that, how would we do it? Well, we're going to take 10 times 6. So 10, time, so 10 grams times 6 moles times 15.999. Then we're going to divide that by 180.142 times 1 times 1. And what we are going to get is that in 10 grams of glucose, we have approximately 5.328 grams of oxygen. Now, being that I only had two sig figs in my original problem, we'll round it to two sig figs. So that would be 5.3 grams of oxygen, and that's for sig figs. And that would be how you can put all these different conversions together. I hope this video helped a little bit. There'll be more to come. Please let, let me like and subscribe and let me know what other future videos you might need. Thank you and hope you all have a wonderful day.